Welcome to Draga, the show where we tell a dumb story using even dumber drawings. I'm Caldwell. I'm Nathan. Nathan, of course, joining us as the halfling rogue Legsy Shortstack. Hello. We are also joined by Julia Lepetite. Hello. Otherwise known as the Eladrin warrior Roxa. Oh, yeah. And Jacob Andrews. Hi. That's right. It's him, the tiefling mage. <laughs> I forgot what your class was for a second. Bo- bone Mage. Warlock, a.k.a. Bone Mage. I'm a straight-up bone magician. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. I won't get it wrong again, I swear. Um, well, guys, it's it's time for another exciting chapter in the, in the nascent history of the Ladies Book Club. Um, I'm going to do a quick recap because it's been a while since we recorded. Does that sound okay? Yes, yeah. please. All right, oh, yeah. here's, here's, here's what's happened so far. So, guys, while celebrating Ladies' Night, uh, our three adventurers encountered a a bartender named Old Baby Gus, and they each tried their best to persuade him to give away one of his his famous free drinks. But in the end, only Legsy's leg-based deception was able to triumph, and thus was she awarded the the Chunt's Chalice, which you are still in possession of, I believe. Oh, yeah, I have not used it. I'm saving it. I I finished the Miller Lite, though. Exactly. the, The Chalice remains. Uh, to recap, that's a drink that allows Legsy to edit another player's drawing for a limited amount of time, determined by me. Uh, next, you guys were approached by Francis, a goblin who was impressed by your cleverness. He decided he wanted to hire you guys for a job, uh, but that was contingent upon your ability to best his invention, the Pugilax, uh, a mythical arcade cabinet. So each of you guys tried to best the Pugilax uh, in a contest of your choosing, and you all earned tickets aplenty. But... As always, there can only be one true champion. And today, our winner is, of course, Roxa. That's right. Yay. Congratulations. Give it up. Everybody clap All it. Right. Everyone do a, a polite Smash Brothers clap. I'm not clapping. Come on. Not Come on, Donkey clap. Kong. Do it. Shoot me by two votes. <laughs> yeah, just barely scraping by. So, so yes. beat me by a large number of votes. <laughs> <laughs> Draw the audience. Not a fan of smooches is what I'm learning. <laughs> no smoo- smooch-based wins. No smooch-based victories. No Jacob. smooches, only smashing. <laughs> yeah. And Sammy's. You made them uncomfortable with your with your uh, your nighttime grooves, Jacob. <laughs> it's too groovy for most people. It's I got to remember that. It was a little too sensual. You got to ease back on that. I-, I would say even Francis was a bit taken aback by your... Uh, I'll mm-hmm. smooch him, too, if you, I have to. You can't to. just dive right in. You got to romance You got to romance our fans I'll a little bit. I'll smooch anyone and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a threat? That's a and, threat. <laughs> Jacob, you are being you are weaponizing ribaldry, and I like it. He's so, dude, he's so puckered right now. Oh my god, this dude is pucked and tucked. That's right, shirt tucked in, lips pucked, ready lips to fucked. ready to fuck. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so, guys, as you recall, so the the breakdown, as it were, is of course Roxa has the most tickets. Uh, Legsy is is in second with a. You know, a, a decent amount of tickets, a respectable amount of tickets, but still second place. And then, of course, Regina has, you know, seven tickets. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> seven just, or so. I'm just glad that I could I could give the Pugilax a chance to dance. <laughs> and and just, you know, just really reflect on our dads. Exactly. Well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned dads because uh, they're all very proud of you. And it's time to make them even prouder by visiting... Old Baby Gus's Magical Whimsical Prize Grotto. Aww. <laughs> Old Baby Gus is sleeping. <laughs> that must be his orc, uh, like, nanny. Yeah, that's Carol. <laughs> uh, Carol kind of keeps an eye on Gus and, you know, flicks her eyes up at you, but then quickly goes back to her uh, her magazine. There's some some nice articles in there about uh, Brad Grit. Uh, an orc actor that she fancies. Um, yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's a fan of it except me, but I'm going to keep doing it, baby. Brad, Brad Grit. Uh, so, guys, do you want to see what prizes you can win? Yeah. Yep. All right, yep. here they come. Whoa. So, first up, we have the Golden Pacifier. Oh, my God. Ooh. Whoa. As, uh, as crafted originally by Iris Milanovic Rooney, uh, the pacifier has the power to turn one of your opponents into a baby, forcing them to draw the picture with their non-writing hand. Ah, <laughs> nice. That's really good. That's great. Next up is the number one dad mug, uh, <laughs> as presented by Ty Ulrich. Um, the most expensive prize should be a number one dad mug that allows the user to summon their fantasy dad to help them with any task. I love that. Uh, so this mug basically... <laughs> allows you to summon uh, your dad, and I mean your in-game fantasy dad, at any point to uh, to help you out with something. Can I call my real dad? 
you can't call your real dad. Uh, I don't know how chill your dad is, but if you want, if you legitimately, if you tell me ahead of time, <laughs> and you want to Skype your dad in <laughs> for a sesh, I am 100% on board with that. <laughs> Wonderful. I want to call Julia's dad. All right, yeah. Let's May, call okay. My dad. Yeah, can your dad just play all our dads? Sure. Julia, can your dad just be our dads in real life? He'll he'll call in and won't be able to ignore his accent. So you'll all have French fathers. That is my that is my dream for the show is just to like somehow by the end of it we're not even on the show anymore. It's just our dads going on an adventure together. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly transition out. Just all right. dads. So the next, uh, I'm excited about this next one. I'm going to actually tweak the description a little bit, but I think it's really solid gold. Um, it is a vape pen <laughs> from uh, Gompers. This is uh, from Gompers Vape Shop. Uh, one of the prizes should be a vape pen that can be vaped using the soul sauce. Uh, Gomper suggested that the vape, the soul sauce be used to summon your dad, but of course we've already got a mug for that. So I'm going to say that you can use the soul sauce to summon, uh, an ally, uh, a, a soul forged vape ally that disperses at the end of the turn. A vapesman. And the, the beautiful thing about this, this vape pen that you can see is that it can take soul sauce. It can actually take anything. Any sort of liquid can be injected into this oh and then gosh. just churned through that sweet vape tube. So Damn. get pumped about that. Yeah, get get ready for some, some sweet chugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys, next time, moving on to tier two. These are, of course, the tier three items that uh, only Roxa is allowed to pick from. Oh, Great. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get excited. Uh, then, of course, we've got uh, in tier two the Wiki Tome, uh, otherwise known as Distant Nerd's Pocket Book of Wisdom. Yes. <laughs> now, the way this tome works is it contains uh, just a vast store of knowledge from a forbidden, uh, a forbidden source. Uh, so, the way it works is when you use this tome, you can summon a, uh, a random page from Wikipedia and then basically oh, yeah. just create a drawing based on that uh, Wikipedia article. And then you use that, whatever you've drawn, uh, as your, you know, I guess, familiar for the episode. Maybe nice. forever. And from whence does the does the wiki tome originate? Uh, the the wiki tome was sold to Old Baby Gus by a traveling salesman known as Your Favorite Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Which tracks... <laughs> He's not a baby. That's the best that's just, answer. That's just what he calls himself. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's why old baby Gus trusted him. A little presumptuous of him, but you know. <laughs> Next up, we have the Tootsie Reroll, which I like a lot. This is um, uh, bought from Jimmy Hughes. It is a, a Tootsie Roll that grants one reroll, plus kind of tastes like chocolate. So that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty nifty prize. You know, if you do a dirty roll and you want to try and get a nice squeaky clean one, uh, this Tootsie Reroll will allow that. Okay, and then next up, no prize grotto would be complete without a sticky hand. <laughs> <laughs> I love it's that got it's a lips. fantasy sticky hand. Mm -hmm. It's got I, the lips. Oh, I, I took some big time liberties on this. Uh, <sighs> some liberties. Oh, Brandon Delia suggested uh, a magical sticky foot, which I'm just noticing I got wrong. But it uh, lets you cut out a part of someone else's drawing and paste it into your own. It oh. gets covered in dirt and pocket lint after one use, though, so it's only one a uh, one-use item. Yeah, as as sticky hands. Yeah, are exactly. In That's yeah. accurate. That tracks. Yeah. Um, all right, now let's move on to tier one. Uh, Jacob, <laughs> Regina, these are of course the items that you will be fancying. Let's see what kind of shit pile garbage bin I'm digging through. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first up is a mustache. I'm so mad. Uh, it's just a mustache. Uh, this is this was a mustache ripped from the face of Severin one 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 one. This is a once in a lifetime chance to hide those hideous naked faces. You can draw a mustache wherever and whenever you want for one picture. Oh, that's pretty great. And I'm gonna allow this to. This this mustache can extend to other people's drawings. It can extend to my drawings. This is a um, this is a quantum mustache. Can go anywhere. Wonderful. But it's a it's a one use single use mustache. Single use stash. Nice. Uh, but, I mean, you still get to keep the mustache afterwards. But it, it's okay. magic only lasts for one round. Makes sense. All right. Next well, up. I can wear it the rest of the game. If I want to. <laughs> you could. <laughs> and you and you will. I'm demanding it. Uh, I'm guys. I'm I'm really excited about this next one. It is. The Rotten Tomato, uh, <laughs> as, as stolen from Sam Murphy's grocery bag. Uh, here's, here's the description. Sitting beside a trash can is a half-full bag of rotten tomatoes. 
Gus seems to have tried to throw it away, but passes it off as a prize anyway when pointed out, claiming that the user can conjure any character from a movie rated below 15% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, man, so many summon ally items. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I, I, guys, by the end of this show, there's just going to be so many familiars wandering so around. Many characters, yeah. <laughs> That's great. It's going to be it's gonna be a crowded room. Um, and, of course, this is an, a one-round-only item, uh, you know, because that tomato does not have much, not have much life left in it. Uh, and then, of course, our last one, uh, as suggested by Daniel Hine, is, of course, the air horn of wreckage. <laughs> It allows the user to play an air horn sound effect once. This can be used at any time. <laughs> um, now, I want to change that because playing an air horn once is funny, but we can do better, Daniel. So the way this is going to work is whoever gets this one, you will roll a die, and that will be the number of air horn sound effects you get. Oh, oh nice. For the entirety of the campaign. Yeah. Uh, well, cool. So let me let me explain do... a little bit. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh. I said, what you got to do is get this one and the uh, the Tootsie Reroll and immediately <laughs> no. use the Tootsie Reroll <laughs> to get as high of a number as oh, possible. Oh, no. My crystal palace crumbling around me. <laughs> <laughs> My intricate lattice work is just falling to pieces. <laughs> wow. God, th- man, these, these are all so good. These are all suggested by our fans. These That's are amazing. Great. Guys, there are so many other good ones that I want to mention at the end of the episode. A lot of honorable mentions this honorable time Honorable mentions, around. of course. Um, yeah. But for some reason, my voice is already getting out, so let's let's get right into it. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> so the way this is going to work is, Roxa, since you have the most tickets, you can pick anything you want from our top tier, or one item from tier two and one item from tier one, or you could just pick every item from tier one and totally screw over Jacob. Uh, in addition to that, what I'm going to allow you guys to do is roll a die to determine if you have any tickets left over, and then you can choose an additional item from the tier below yours. Uh, Jacob, I'm sorry, that means that you straight up only get one prize, my dude. Great, wonderful. I'm never kissing anything again. <laughs> <laughs> Draga promotes abstinence. That is our... <laughs> <laughs> that is the message of this show. That is the theme. That is the overarching uh, theme of the show. Uh, all right, let's get down to it, guys. Um, that's enough of me talking. I want to hear what prizes you guys want. Ooh, well, um, well, well. Nathan, uh, shut up. It's Roxas' turn. I don't know, man. They're so good. I do have a question. Yes. Uh, if I do number one, dad, do I have to design my dad in a in a drawing? Yes. I think that is that is a uh, definitely a, a caveat, a caveat or a bonus, depending on how you see it. Uh, you get to draw your own dad. You get to design a dad for your for your character. Okay. I, I think to me that is a, a boon. I would be I would be pumped to get to draw my in in universe dad. <laughs> uh, but that's up yeah. to you. Um, I think, I mean, okay, because the baby arm one, like, Roxa doesn't need any handicaps. It's strong <laughs> enough, right? right? Yeah, we know. Nice. We, we get it. She likes the challenge anyway, so mm-hmm. you Good guys are like, yeah. yeah, so she likes the challenge. She doesn't need to handicap you. Um, Big Pen, you know, again, strong enough, don't need that many allies. Number one dad, though. Mm-hmm. Dad and I are like real tight. Yeah. Aww. I think well, I I'm like going to go with number one dad mug. Well done. Good choice. All right. Thank you. Number one dad mug goes to Roxa. And you didn't screw us over. I did, you know, <laughs> Thank you so again, much. I, uh, We're do all you... friends. I don't want to screw you over. Now, Roxa, I do think that you, you have a few more tickets left over. Would you like to roll and see if you have enough for uh, one of the items in the in the tier below? Sure. What, what did you roll? Fifteen. Yeah, you can afford um, you can afford a Tootsie reroll if you'd like it. I'll take it. All right, Tootsie <laughs> reroll goes to Roxa. <laughs> Ain't using those tickets for anything else. Big nah, winner. Yeah. Big winner today. All right. Uh, up well, my great. room. Roxa stashes those inside Demon Johnny's mouth. Um, <laughs> into the void forever. Yeah, into the void forever until they are needed. Uh, Demon Johnny thinks wistfully about his own dad for a moment, uh, who uh, a, a character we will get to much later, I promise. <laughs> and now, uh, Legsy, it's, it's your choice. What do you want? Well, Legsy was kind of eyeing that candy, but mm-hmm. uh, it's gone. <laughs> so, Sorry, Legsy. Um, yeah, I mean, Legsy would never use an item with a hand on it. Uh, oh, sure. Legsy is 100% leg based all the way. Mm-hmm. So if you had drawn, if you had made it the foot as originally described, Damn. you might have gone for it. But uh, as of right now, 
Legsy's got to take that tome. Get that tome, boy. Girl. Yep. Person. Person I respect. Yep. All right. Uh, Legsy claims the tome. Wonderful. Do you want to give me a roll real quick? Yeah, Legsy. Legsy's. You know, she's feeling around. She. Mm -hmm. You know, it was. It was raining tickets when she was dancing, so oh, she yeah. might have dropped a few. But yeah, she dropped all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Which you did. I got a one. <laughs> A Nathan classic role. Um, Carol sees your your one solo extra ticket, uh, and she she kind of feels bad for you, honestly. So she reaches down underneath the counter and pulls out a, a ring. Uh, it's a spider ring, but it's also an actual spider. Oh, um, so it's basically oh, just no. a spider with a string on it. Um, <laughs> and she says, "Here you go." Uh, th th <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Spiders you, have lots of legs, so mm -hmm. Legsy's into that. Exactly. Yeah, that's why she thought of it. That was the the main and only reason she thought of that. Yeah. Um, so you take you take the spider ring. That was actually suggested yeah. by another person whose name will appear on screen because I forgot who it was. Woo. Um, and now, uh, Regina, it is your turn. Time to pick some items. Oh, boy. All of the, the single tiers are left, and who knows? You might have found an extra ticket or two lying around. We'll see, we'll see how you do. Maybe I can get lucky. Mm -hmm. um, well, as as part of Regina's affinity for uh, dead things, she mm -hmm. she also is a fan of movies that died in the box office. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she's gonna have to go with the uh, the Rotten Tomato. Regina, I swear to God, if you take this tomato and don't summon Brendan Fraser from Monkey Bone, you're off the goddamn show. <laughs> That's uh, just I'm just making a proclamation. <laughs> Listen, it's got to be a bone move. Does, does Monkey Bone have below 15% on Rotten Tomatoes? It must. It must, right? If it doesn't, then that movie is luckier than Jacob's character. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, you want to do do a roll, see if you got yeah, any more tickets floating I'll around? I'll do a quick re-roll. Okay. I rolled a 12. Okay, okay. Uh, for 12... Yeah, I'll give you that mustache. I'll throw that mustache in. How about oh, that? Oh boy, man, I was I was hoping I could slap that thing on Bone Regard's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yep. Not right. me. My little dapper Bone Boy, Bone Regard. I'd love a mustache. My face is so bare. Uh, okay. <laughs> You're too annoying. A mustache would just heighten that. <laughs> it's true. I couldn't twiddle it because I don't have any hands. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like you. In this situation, you might say that it here suits him. Oh, Christ. <laughs> In this situation, I guess you could say it here suits him. There you go. Yeah. Hooray! Wow, wonderful. <laughs> Everyone laughs and it was better. <laughs> it's all in the delivery. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm learning so much from you, Jonathan. Well, guys, um, so th th during this entire uh, prolonged experience, uh, Francis, you guys remember Francis, your, your goblin friend, How has been kind of... Yeah, he has been checking his pocket watch uh, nervously. You know, he's ready to get a he's ready to get a move on. So he looks up and says, oh, you, you guys done? You, you, you get all your prizes and stuff? Do you, do you need another second? You need to use the restroom? Are we we good to go here? I don't know if you remember my my friend is kind of dead and uh you know, I I'd like to get a move on. All right, yeah. man. I mean, this whole You're video game who... thing was was your Yeah, yeah. You, you wanted was this. Was your call. We, I mean, the video game the prizes. Hey, we're just hey. trying to get turned. We're, we're just enjoying ourselves. <sighs> All right, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just a little high strung. Well, you know what? Let's go out. I've I've called us a, a Hoover. Um, it's it's uh, outside. And well, now uh, that you mentioned, I do I do have to go to the bathroom. Uh, I did drink all that Miller yeah, Lite. Jesus so Christ! It, okay. Can you, can you hold it? Can you have it wait? Yeah. Oh. No, I'll, I'll get it to wait. Um, okay, I'll, let me let me text the guy right now. <laughs> so I guess uh, I guess roll to see how long you pee for. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> Nine. Okay, you pee nine for nine years. straight minutes. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a clean, uninterrupted stream for nine minutes. <laughs> so you come out, uh, you know, zipping. Ooh, that feels good. Yep. Oh. Zipping everything back up. Uh, and then, of course, Francis is like, Jesus Christ! What happened? <laughs> I was about to call the cops. The, the guy, the meter on the cab has been running this entire time. Anyway, let's go. Come on. Okay. So he, he hurries you all out the door. Uh, you wave goodbye to old baby Gus, who's still snoozing away. Um, and you see that uh, Francis has called a, what appears to be a cab, but as he referred to it, he's called you a hoofer. Oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Caldwell, you delightful man. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, which, like, you know, you guys have 
heard about this app, but you know, you've never had the chance to use it. This is kind of like, this is the upscale of upscale Ubers, because uh, Uber also exists in this world. But like to get a hoofer, that is a uh, mm, that is primo, man. So so you guys all pile in the back, and you think it's going to be uncomfortable, but it's actually it's actually uh, it's a good fit. There's uh, some somehow magically more room in there than you would, you would uh, expect. Nice. Um, so uh, the the driver, whose name is um, it was Buttercup. Uh, he, he starts, he, he kicks the car into high gear and you guys start uh, tearing down the road. Um, and Francis leans back and, and, and kind of starts to fill you guys in. He says, uh, well guys, okay, so we're finally underway. Uh, I figured it's about time I told you a little more about Daryl. So as you know, he, he was my business partner and he's a, a brilliant inventor, but he was just suddenly murdered. <gasps> and since it, since it happened, I've, I've dedicated all my time and money to trying to find his killer and, and bring him to justice. And I've I found my most promising lead in months, which is why I've, I've assembled you all. So I know that there is at least a clue, uh, perhaps a journal entry or something hidden in Daryl's lab. I've traced it back to Daryl's lab, which has kind of gotten uh, kind of fallen by the wayside, become a bit derelict in the in the past months since his death. Wait, wait de- derelict? derelict? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. No, you're not wrong. Wait. Wait. Derelict? Oh, okay. you, you guys got it. Yeah, we are. We're right <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sorry. Uh, well, all right. G- better luck next time, Jonathan. <laughs> Francis is kind of taken to Jonathan. He's not so sure about the rest of you guys, but he's on board with Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> he's the only one. <laughs> so I anyway, got away with goblins. I know that there's got to be a clue to who killed Daryl lurking in his lab somewhere, but that is not the only thing that's lurking in Daryl's lab. You see, after he died, the entire campus was run over by monsters, uh, and they're just kind of they're just kind of hanging out in there. It's kind of become like the cool spot for monsters. It's like. It's like when you it's like when you see a bunch of teens hanging out inside of Wendy's, and you're like, uh. I mean, I, I I'm glad they're having a good time, but like I'm a little I, they, that seems suspect. Inside that's, inside a inside a Wendy goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that's what I meant when I said Wendy's. That's yeah, the yeah. abbreviation for Wendigos, the, yeah. the popular restaurant where you can eat human flesh. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, so there's got to be some sort of secret. I think Daryl kept a fastidious diary. So I think that if I can get into his lab, if we can sneak in there, we can find uh, some sort of clue that will help us uncover who it was that killed Daryl. And uh, so he, he keeps telling you a little more about Daryl. Uh, you know, as you guys are driving, Francis, you know, tells you a couple fun anecdotes about Daryl. Um, about all the all the goofs he would play, he was a real prankster. Um, oh, you know, a lot of loosen it up a little bit around us. That's yeah, nice. yeah. He he loosens his collar and his cuffs uh, and his shoes, uh, and everything's very loose now. Um, <laughs> Great, <laughs> love it. Legsy loves it loose. <laughs> uh, and you know, since you guys are getting to know each other better, uh, yeah. And, and Francis actually produces a. Uh, a flask from inside his uh, his briefcase and passes it around. So you guys are all uh-huh. feeling you guys are all feeling pretty good. Uh, yeah. You're finally you're finally achieving that mystical level of turnt with which you desired at the beginning of this adventure. Um, and as you guys are all starting to feel good, starting to feel relaxed and rested, the car comes to a halt. And uh, Buttercup, the driver, starts whinnying uncontrollably. Oh uh, no! Yeah, it's it's kind of a weird thing because he's still driving the car, but he's also whinnying and like. He's doing that thing that horses do where they back up, but he's doing it in the car. So the car is just kind of like <laughs> going back and forth a lot, and he's kind of making that oh. noise what's, with his mouth. What's the matter, boy? <laughs> Ooh, monsters up ahead. Oh. I don't like it. No, sir. Mm, this Ooh, is as far as the, I go. Are we near the campus? Yep. Near the near, cool, mm-hmm. cool monster party campus? I'm I'm trying to party with some monsters. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a dope party. Yeah, no party. <laughs> Let me tell you that. I will tell you right now. It is no party. Oh boy! Uh, also, I should mention that this ride was a surge of three times, so you're going to need to really shell out. Uh, oh Francis God. seems miffed that that was not explained up front, <laughs> but he he pays the driver, uh, and uh, Buttercup hightails it away, never to be seen again. Not a recurring character, just here for that one time, and never to be seen again. And you came up with that whole voice for him and everything. <laughs> as as he drives away, he says, "I'm never going to be on the show again." <laughs> God, I miss him already. <laughs> Damn. Uh, but he did leave a business card. So you guys can 
can call up if if, we, if you find do we a give him a, a rating a hoofer r- review I think you should at this moment yeah like Francis Francis doesn't like to let that linger so let's go ahead and uh do you guys have a <laughs> do you guys have a d6 yeah yeah <laughs> do you want to roll for your rating for, for buttercup wait we'll we don't see, uh, we we'll don't see, just get to pick it <laughs> see how many <laughs> hoofs how many hoofs we give him no Francis is Francis is doing it oh Francis but, is doing it yeah Francis is a little more critical Oh, two. man, two hoofs. Oh, oh cause no! Because he jacked up the price. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. price, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dang. Well, I thought it was cool that he let us drink in the car. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was a pretty, that was a pretty boss move. But um, unfortunately, with a, two hoof, with a two hoof rating, you're probably not going to see uh, Buttercup again. Dang. Uh, you guys all side-eye Francis, and he's like, what? Come on. It, he, he jacked up the price at the last minute. That is not cool. I'm going to tweet about this. Francis got money. We know he does. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything about my finances. <laughs> There's no joke there. It's just it's got us there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. <laughs> it's yeah. just blind conjecture. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see how loose his suit is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, you're right. <laughs>